All right, in podcast number six from chapter 14, we're going to cover the sex link traits. And these are traits whose genes are found on the sex chromosomes, either the X chromosome or the Y chromosome. But it's almost always the X chromosome simply because it's larger. And we have a picture coming up that will show you the difference in these two, si two uh, size of chromosomes. All right, now, I often call these X-linked traits because they're almost always found on that X chromosome. And now because they're X-linked, they have a tendency to show up in males much more common or much more often than females. Okay, so here we're going to have an example. And we're going to say this allele, we're just going to give it the letter A. So because it's found on the X chromosome, we're going to use an X with a superscript. And then here is the recessive allele. So when you do your Punnett square problems, you need to use these X's with a superscript. Okay, so this is the normal allele and this is the bad allele. Now for girls, it pretty much works just like it would if it was an autosomal trait where we just use letters. They can be homozygous dominant, they can be heterozygous, or they can be homozygous recessive. Okay, now let's list the phenotypes here. Homozygous dominant, you're normal. If you're heterozygous for a female, you're normal. But we call these girls a carrier because they can pass this bad allele on to the next generation. And then obviously, if they're homozygous recessive, then they have the disease. Now with boys, they only have two different types of genotypes. And it's because they only carry one X uh, chromosome. So this gentleman here would be normal, and then this one here would actually have the disease. Notice, for the girl to have the disease, she needs to be homozygous. And typically, these alleles are very rare in the gene pool, so the odds of a girl getting two of these is, you know, it's like winning the lottery. But a little bit better chance for the guys because they only need to have one. All right, so all of these sex-linked recessive disorders are going to show this inheritance pattern. All right, so here we have a picture of these two chromosomes, and notice that the X chromosome is a way bigger than this little Y. And on this gene map, we show the locations of some sex-linked traits. For example, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. This is one of the muscular dystrophies that's involved with that Jerry Lewis Labor Day telethon. Melanoma, an inherited version of uh, skin cancer. The X inactivation center, we're going to talk about X inactivation at a later podcast, uh, actually podcast number eight. Uh, this is a type of inherited immune deficiency, uh, similar to AIDS, but you're just kind of born with it. If you've ever seen the movies, uh, like I think they're mainly titled Boy in the Bubble, they have this one, uh, Skid for short. Red-green color blindness, which we're going to get to in just a second, and the same with hemophilia. Okay, on your Y chromosome, the only gene that really matters is up here at the top. And this is that switch that turns you in to being a boy instead of a girl. All right, because everybody gets an X chromosome, you're kind of pre-programmed to be a girl. In order to, to turn into a guy, you need to have this chromosome because it's got this one switch. All right, now this map over here, all of these genes are completely made up except for this top one. This one here is just for fun. I found it very entertaining. All right, so think about some of the dumb stuff that guys do. For example, some guys, like myself, are really into electronic gadgets. So we have a gene here called Mac Locus. Get it? Mac computers. Guys are notorious channel flippers, especially on Sunday and Saturday afternoons watching football because they have the flip gene. Boys are often very good at catching and throwing stuff. Balls one or BLZ one. Okay. Self-confidence, and remember, this has nothing to do with your ability. This is kind of like the, hey, y'all, watch this gene, uh, BLZ2. The um, ability to remember and tell jokes. Got one. The ability to read and understand the sports page. Buddy. The addiction to death and destruction movies. Terminator 2 or T2, T2 gene. The ability to play air guitar. That's the riff gene. The ability to identify aircraft. DC-10, passenger plane. Pre this is one of my favorites. Pre-adolescent fascination with arachnids, spiders, and reptiles. Mom, for you, the ability to spit, patooey. 
sitting on a jo sitting on the toilet and reading the sit gene inability to express affection over the phone me too selective hearing locus huh and this is very typical of guys we all have this gene total lack of recall for dates especially anniversaries uh, oops do you remember real fake <laughs> All right, red, green, color blindness. Look at some real genes. If you look over here in this picture, if you cannot see this green 15 in there, then you're red, green, color blind. This is an X-linked recessive allele, and it's most common in males because of the inheritance pattern I just showed you earlier. In this example, this is typically how a guy inherits red, green, color blindness. Mom was a carrier. Dad had normal vision. Now, in their female offspring, Half of their females will be carriers because they're all going to get a big C from dad, but half of them will get a big C from mom. The other half will get the little C, and that's what's going to make them the carrier. In their male offspring, half of them will be colorblind because they're always going to get a Y from dad. The big C came from mom, and the other half will get a little C from mom, and those will be the colorblind ones. So if you look at all of their kids, they have a 1 in 4 chance of being colorblind. But if you look at just females, none of them are colorblind, but a 50% chance of being a carrier. And in their males, 50% chance of having the colorblind trait. And this is really how all these X-linked recessive traits are inherited. Okay, the next one is hemophilia. Uh, this is also X-linked recessive. Uh, one of the proteins that's used in the blood clotting process is defective. So if these guys were to cut their finger, uh, it's going to have a hard time stopping bleeding. Um, and if you have a bad enough wound, you could potentially bleed to death where a normal person would survive from it. Right? This was once known as the royal disease because it was very common in European royal families. All right, so here we got our Punnett square. Uh, there's mom who's a carrier. There's dad who's normal, and just like we saw in the previous example, half the females will be carriers, here's your carriers, and half the males could be a hemophiliac, and they have a one in four chance of having a child with hemophilia, but they're all boys, because they only need to inherit one bad allele. Okay, now here's the family tree of the royal families in Europe. Now these guys were much, uh, royal families in Europe were very common prior to World War I, once World War II one was over, a lot of these great royal families lost their throne. Okay, Queen Victoria of England, who reigned until the early 1900s, she was a carrier. And she had a daughter, Alice, who was a carrier, but she had a son who was a hemophiliac. And so he passed these traits on. So you start to see over here how this shows up more often. Okay, Now you'll notice in this pedigree, um, there's a little bit of inbreeding in these royal families because royalty would marry other royalty. As you can see here, here's a, an English throne line marrying the Tsar of Russia. We also have the uh, royalty of Spain marrying over here to England. And you'll hear, see right here, here you've got a direct line with cousins marrying each other. Okay? All right. Now, this is the current royal family in England, Prince Charles. And if this was a little bit more modern, Yep, so let's go back here. Um, you'd have Lady Di off of here, and then you'd have Prince William, and then Prince William would be uh, married to Kate from that wonderful uh, wedding from this summer, and then whatever child they'll have eventually. All right, now over here is the ro last royal family of Russia. And if you can remember your early Russian, or actually your early 20th century Russian history, um, with Nicholas II, who abdicated his phone or his uh, phone, his throne during World War One, and Rasputin was involved in all this, and all these people were um, were killed by the Soviets. But Alexis suffered from, or Al Alexei, I should say, suffered from hemophilia, and that's what brought um, Rasputin into this whole story, because Tsar Alexandria was looking for some help. All right, so once called the royal disease. Okay, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, once again, X-linked recessive. Muscular dystrophy, dystrophy means it's it's going to stop working. So basically your muscles will eventually stop working. So causes a progressive weakening and loss of skeletal muscle. And it does affect one out of 3,000 American males. So not very common, but common enough. 
Now, they did something weird in this example. They used subscripts, which is actually really uncommon. And I know this looks like a zero. It's actually a D. It's a capital letter D. So as you can see here, typical of how it's inherited, dad is normal. So he would have a, basically, he should have a big D here, and she should have a little D on one of these. But half the females are, are carriers, and half their boys will actually get the disease. Now, in a pedigree of this, your carriers are going to be half colored in. Those that actually have the disease will be completely filled in. And notice the ones who only have the disease are the males because they only need the one allele. All right, that will conclude podcast number eight. And our next couple of podcasts are a little bit shorter than this one.